Welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Check Service Industry Podcast. I'm Rashawn Parker, and stick around because we are going to make some Paleo Caribbean pumpkin rice today with my fantastic guest, Althea Brown. She has a brand new cookbook out. It's called Caribbean Paleo. It is available now. The link is right down there, and you can go pick it up and check out all the other cookbooks from all the fantastic uh, cookbook authors I've had on the show. Go get her cookbook. We're going to make some Caribbean pumpkin rice. Let's do that. All right. I have the fantastic Althea Brown on the show. So thank you for being here and thank you for sending me this fantastic cookbook. No, thank you for having me and for trying this recipe. It's going to be awesome. Well, I figured it was fall, right? And Mm -hmm. so what better thing to make than some pumpkin, some pumpkin rice? It's pumpkin season, so you got to do it. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, who inspired you, and how did you get this wonderful cookbook made? Yes, of course. Um, so I'm Althea Brown. I run metmg.com, which is a blog about Guyanese and Caribbean cuisine. So it has a lot of traditional Guyanese and Caribbean things on my blog. But also, personally, I'm paleo. So at some point, I was like, I should really start sharing like how I actually eat and not the food that I'm making for my family who's not paleo. And so I started sharing like some of the traditional dishes like this pumpkin rice, which is made usually with rice. And I would make it with cauliflower rice because I don't eat rice or I try not to eat rice, I have to say. (laughs) Rice has a chokehold on me. And it's one of the things that like I try desperately to limit in my diet, but I can't fully eliminate even though I'm paleo-ish. And so, um, I started Paleo-ish. remixing. Yeah, we, we got to put in that ish there because if someone sees me in the street, they'll be like, I thought you don't eat rice. And now I'll be like stuffing my face with sushi or something. <laughs> so um, I started making some paleo recipes and sharing it. And I realized that there were so many other Caribbean people who were just like me who don't eat certain things and are also gluten free. Um, and then I put together this cookbook because I was like, my community needs this. Very nice. So uh, I looked through all of it. I wouldn't even know if I wasn't, you know, looking for a paleo dish. Half of it I wouldn't even recognize as just being a dietary specific item, you know, because it all just looks so delicious. And that's Uh, exactly what it is. Like a lot of it are just straightforward Caribbean recipes that happen to be paleo that I put together under this banner of Caribbean paleo. And there are a few there that are like grain free and gluten free. I mean, classic chicken stew. Uh, you know, That's looks, a, you uh, got to make that one. That one's amazing. I will, I will get on it. I, I didn't figure we'd have quite enough time today. <laughs> Otherwise, that <laughs> looks amazing. But explain paleo to somebody. I just don't. I don't know. Yeah. What, what, is, what is the paleo diet? Yeah. So the paleo diet really encourages you to eat uh, an anti-inflammatory diet. So there are a lot of foods that will cause inflammation, cause gut issue. I was a, a chronic like heartburn, acid reflux struggler. Um, my doctor diagnosed me with GERD and said, you know, like take these pills for the rest of your life and that's the only way you're going to be able to eat. And I, I realized through like doing an elimination diet that it was actually some key food groups that were making me have this massive acid reflux every time I ate. And those were like gluten, um, grains, sugar and highly processed things. I didn't even know about the paleo diet at the time. I just started to like avoid these things. But as I started to like, you know, start to internet for recipes with like not having gluten and not having sugar, I happened upon the paleo diet. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. This kind of is where I think I need to be. And then I started like following it and really thinking about, you know, not using too many seed oils, not using refined sugar in my diet and soy and uh, legumes. And I find that when I eat that way, I am my best self. Like I feel good. I don't have acid reflux. I have high energy and all this kind of stuff. So I say I'm paleo-ish because (laughs) like traditional Caribbean food has all the things I just mentioned. And I am at my core a Guyanese Caribbean person. And so I flex a little here and there, right? Like sometimes when I'm feeling really good, I'm like, wow, I feel so good. Let me see if I could eat this thing and how I'll feel. So here and there I flex and, and try to figure out because uh, yeah, like- You gotta like experiment a little, right? Food. 
you got to flex, right? You got to be able to try different things. So that's kind of the paleo diet. There's lots of information on it. There's like a paleo diet.com where you can read about all the rules. There's some people who follow it very strictly and don't deviate. And then there are people like me who are like 80% of the time I'm paleo, 20% of the time I'm eating what I want. So what is specifically cheating for a traditional paleo diet then? Like what is the big no-no's? Yeah, so the big no-nos are no um, grains, so no wheat, corn, rice, no legumes, so beans, peas, all that stuff out the window, no dairy, and no refined sugar. So those are like the four main things that you try to avoid when you're doing paleo. Too shit. All right, so <laughs> in, we're going to go over the ingredients in, in the uh, pumpkin rice. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so uh, to make this pumpkin rice, I, I, let's see if I can get it right and you tell mm -hmm. me if I go wrong here. I have 20 ounces of uh, cauliflower rice. Yeah. Frozen, currently thawing. Yes. I got uh, two cups of butternut squash. I had to, mm -hmm. it's all the store had, so I got the butternut squash. Yep. You can option this out for the other squashes, such as? You can do calabaza squash, which is like the main squash that's used in Caribbean cooking. Um, you can also do pumpkin, even the like Halloween oh. pumpkin's really good in there. Um, oh. You could do kabucha squash, which is the other like pumpkin-esque looking squash, but it's really hard to peel. Um, but any kind of gourd that has that orange pumpkin feel will work. Nice. And then I got uh, two medium diced tomatoes here. Mm -hmm. Half of a yellow onion. Yeah. I got three cloves of garlic. Yeah. Um, some uh, basil, just chopped mm -hmm. up there. Yeah. Fresh, fresh. Fresh basil. Uh, and then some thyme. Got some sprigs of thyme. Yes. It's fresh. Yeah. I, I, know, I know I could have used dry, but I went fresh. You could have used dry. You're, you got it. You're on the money. Touche. All right. And then <laughs> uh, because we're sticking away from nut oils or anything like that, we have the coconut oil. Mm-hmm. How paleo would the coconut have been? So coconut oil is very paleo. Um, it's a really great uh, fat source and um, it's great for digestion and gut health. And because this dish has coconut milk, these flavors actually go really well together. You could use olive oil, you could use avocado oil or any other oil for your preference, even if you're not paleo. Um, will work. This one has more flavor. Because, yeah, but because it's a coconut based rice, it just works. I like it. Uh, and then, of course, the coconut milk. I got one cup of coconut milk. Mm -hmm. And I got a tablespoon and a half with a little extra salt, some yeah. kosher salt, and a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper. Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah, Nailed that's it. it. It's pretty simple. I did it, guys. I got it all laid out. So, should I? Whoa. <laughs> Pay no attention to the cauliflower storm. I, I think I blew up the last chunk, and it, it's, it's everywhere now. So we're Sometimes okay. cauliflower rice is like all frozen together solid. So you just want it to be a little loose so you can manage it in the pan. If you've done that, you're good. Oh, she's she's loosey goosey. Good. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, so uh, I don't have the recipe in front of me. So I'm yeah. hoping that hoping that you, you'll help me just walk through this if you don't mind. I, I got you, I got you. <laughs> it's so nice to have the chef and the author like with you while you're trying to do something. Because if I mess it up or I need advice, she's right there. You can't even mess this up, it's so easy. All right. Oh, I left out a cup of water. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so what do I do first here? So first you pop that uh, coconut oil in there in your pan. So you have a medium pan that's been heating up. You'll add the coconut oil, let that melt All and right. coat the, pan, the surface of the pan. All right. And then you're going to add in the onions once that gets hot so that the onions can cook a little, get a little translucent. So would the traditional uh, Caribbean rice, like pumpkin rice, would have been made with regular rice? Is it something that like your grandmother made or? It's or... something, not my grandmother, but my mom makes this a lot and my dad. And in the recipe, in the book, I say to add dried shrimp, which is an ingredient that my dad loves to cook with. Uh, and so I this is for one it. of the recipes that are like paying homage to him. Um, <laughs> Here's to you, Althea's dad. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I tried to find the shrimp in the store. I couldn't find dried shrimp. Where, where is the dried shrimp? Yeah, so I, I found dried shrimp in my local supermarkets here, but in, I live in Colorado, but you can also find it in Asian markets. Um, uh, their Asian cultures are big on like dried fish and stuff like that. Yeah, I went to a food line. 
It's, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. But it's just as good without it. The dried shrimp gives it a little bit of a, like, um, umami flavor, mm-hmm. more or less. Yeah. So it's a little dab of fish sauce, maybe? Yes. Yeah. Maybe. Except that most fish sauce has Not soy, paleo. which can't work for paleo. Yeah. <laughs> Shucks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think I'm warm. I'm going to throw okay. the onions in here. Onions in. Yeah. Add a pinch of salt to that just to help sweat those onions a little. Ta-da. All right. So I got those in. How long we go in here? So usually I do that for about three minutes um, at the regular heat. But you just want to get the onions to cook a little bit so that it's not too sharp when you're when it's in your dish or not too mushy and really develop those flavors but once you get that going then you'll add the tomatoes and cook that as well because you really want the tomatoes to get mushy and kind of have like a a little sauce going on there yeah Yeah. to really flavor everything else i like it so paleo's desserts is that a thing like that's definitely a thing. There is a section in the book called Something a Little Sweet. And it's a playoff of like Caribbean people. We are not really big on dessert dessert, but we're always like, well, oh, I feel like to eat something a little sweet. So that's kind of play on that. And um, typically you would remake your traditional things just using alternative flowers. And that's how you would get paleo desserts. So what kind of alternative flowers? So like almond flour, cassava flour, um, other nut flour blends are really great. Uh, but that's usually tapioca flour or um, arrowroot flour, some of the alternative flours that you would use. That and is more flowers than I thought there even were in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? In the last couple of years, there have been a huge development in alternative flours. Um, they're... There's just so many of them now that people are trying different things to see how they work because a lot of people now, besides paleo, are figuring out that they're actually sensitive or allergic to gluten. And so a lot of people are not having wheat flour, but we kind of want to have the same things we're used to. So there's a Mm -hmm. lot of playing around with, well, can I use this flour instead and get the same results? Yeah, it's... It's the whole revolution in the in the food world, just trying to make things that we generally actually love already, mm-hmm. and then somehow somehow make a a healthier version of it. Do you remember uh, carob? Yeah. That's what that was my chocolate as a child was carob. Yeah. Like, like yeah. we didn't get we didn't get chocolate. We got carob. Is carob paleo? Carob is paleo. Carob um, paleo. <laughs> So is cocoa, by the way. Cocoa is paleo, but oh. there are some paleo chocolates. They just use um, other sugars, like they'll use honey or maple syrup or other um, non-refined cane sugars. Definitely yeah. no high fructose corn syrup. Definitely <laughs> none of that. It's so funny because... That was a recent invention. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, um, I only learned about carob like very recently as I was like in the health food store and I tend to get like migraines from having too much chocolate, but I'm a huge chocolate lover. And so I saw it in the health food store and I was like, what is this? And then I like went like full force, all this like experiment and cooking with it and making it. It's fantastic. (laughs) Yay. You'll you'll have to give me one of those recipes at some point. (laughs) Yeah. None of those in there? No. No? Maybe on the website? No, actually. Yeah. So now they're like, remember I said how I just started sharing some of the things I do at home? Uh-huh. Yeah. So those are some of those, like me trying it out at home and being like fascinating, but not ready to share yet. Touche. Still under lock and key, but possibly coming soon. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Very good. All right. Uh, squash, tomatoes. Tomatoes in. Let's get and those cooked. Tomatoes. And so now you got a good sizzle going on. Yeah, she's working. Yeah. Worth every penny of the thirty-five dollars I paid for that thing, <laughs> which is also P.S. in the Amazon store down there. If you want to, I think I have the same one. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing pretty good. Yeah. Mm. There, sometimes Fresh. I use um, for my videos. I use a camping stove, the one that has like the little propane burner. With the propane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
I would like to. My wife thinks I'll burn the house down. I keep telling her I won't. But, <laughs> but those ones, let me tell you, they go like, they'll get oh, really yeah. hot really fast and they're amazing. Gas burners. You can, you can do it inside. Yeah. Great, great for it. Great for, you know, uh, disasters such as hurricanes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> power outages of any kind. Or making Instagram food videos. <laughs> or making Instagram food videos. P.S. Go follow uh, Althea <laughs> on her Instagram at what? Metemg. It's a Guyanese dish, and it means a lot to me. So. What is the dish? What's Metemg? Yeah, so Metemg is a dish made with root vegetables. So like your yucca or cassava, sweet potatoes, um, plantains, which are not root vegetables, but fall in that category. Um, just cooked in a coconut milk broth. And oh. so it's like amazing. Like everything comes together and it's just delicious. And it's something my grandmother used to make all the time. So I named my blog off after that. Touche. Had I known. Next time. Next time. We, we're <laughs> yeah. making that. That's not in the cookbook. And it does take a little bit of time and practice. But yes, yeah, yeah. for sure. So we're not doing that because I could have easily fudged that up. <laughs> It took me, like, I have this running joke because I had my blog for, I think, about five years before I actually shared the recipe for it because it took me that long to, like, perfect it. And it's a dish that, like, if you don't get it right, people will give you shit for it. So I was It like, took you five years to nail it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, like, I'm a cooking it and cooking it. And then... Um, make a whole blog about that, how to fuck I up know, the... <laughs> People would say all the time, like, I came to your blog looking for this recipe. How could you have a blog called this and not have the recipe? So there was like this running joke of like, will I ever get this recipe, MetMG recipe right? Yeah. I got it right now. It's perfect. And all my right. dad approves. So yes. <laughs> but still under lock and key currently. No, it's on the website. It's oh, it's on the website? The yeah. All right. So we can go start messing up our own MetMG if we would like to. <laughs> <laughs> right now, go to our website, get the recipe, put... Start making some Instagram videos about how to mess up MetMG <laughs> until you get it right. That's all right. It's a group effort now, guys. It started a whole trend. All right, so okay, my so tomatoes then, are getting kind of soft here. Yeah, so you're good. Now you want to add in that squash that you had chopped in there and all, right. all of your other ingredients except for the coconut milk and the, coconut and the um, cauliflower rice. Copy that. Yeah. All so right, so two cups of squash in. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and throw my garlic in. Yep. Do, 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 do. And you can put the thyme in with the stems and everything. You'll just fish it out at the end. All right. Easy work. Thyme. In. Yeah. Basil. Yep. Basil in there. Beauteous. I like that I didn't have to pick the thyme apart. That's like my least favorite thing to do. I know, it's such a pain, but the good thing is because you're going to be adding some liquids and this is going to be boiling, they'll just all fall off and then you'll just fish the stem out before you serve it. Dig it. So, um, you're in Colorado. I am. When did you move to Colorado? I moved here about 13 years ago um, after I was recently married and my husband had moved here for work, so we moved here together. And we fell in love with it. I moved from uh, New York, so it was a bit of an adjustment. But New York City. Yeah. <laughs> to Colorado. To Colorado. People are actually friendly in Colorado. And people are so friendly. <laughs> it was so funny because when I first moved, you know, you come with your like New York aggressiveness and also your New York hustle. Like, Did that person to... just wave at me? <laughs> you have to do everything like. <laughs> at super lightning speed. So everybody annoys you and aggravates you that's moving even a fraction slower than you are. And my husband yeah. was saying, calm down, you're not in New York. Like, <laughs> it's okay, like you're not in New Kick York. Get back, you're on mountain time, girl, relax. Exactly. <laughs> and so now- Chill, you're in um, Colorado. <laughs> now I'm totally chill. I went to New York uh, last week. I actually did a little taping with Food Network, which was fantastic. But um, I was there in the city and I was just like being aggravated by New Yorkers and how rude and busy they are <laughs> and how like they have no respect for anyone as this woman like whacks me on the sidewalk with her pot with her purse. And I'm like, are you kidding me? 
But I was like, yeah, I used to be one of these people. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you've adapted. You've adapted. I have. Probably for the better. Probably for the better. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> so you what, You were just on Food Network? What were you doing? Yeah. So I went to New York. Um, I did a little taping for Food Network. It's not It's not airing yet. Um, and I can't really talk about all the specifics, but I made a couple of recipes on there with my mom. And oh. that was really fantastic. That's fun. Yeah, it was really fun. Uh, is your, your mom... Uh... On Instagram too? Can we go follow mom? No, no, my mom's not on oh. Instagram. Oh. Just, I feature her um, here and there on my Instagram whenever she visits me from New York because she's like a hardcore Guyanese auntie and like peels her vegetables in her hand with her, with her little paring knife and oh. that kind of stuff. So I always um, show her when she's visiting just making food that yeah. she loves. You got to catch her in the act, right? Exactly, exactly. She's like, are you filming me? Yeah. <laughs> and she's very like low key, so she's always like, I I don't want you to film me when, when I'm doing this and I'm like, It's okay, nobody cares. Like, <laughs> every, They're gonna it, love you, mom. They're gonna yeah. love you. And she I had her make roti once when she was here and that recipe went viral. Oh. And she was so Did you tell her? Like, she was like, What are they saying? Like tell me tell me what the comments are and are they liking it and stuff. I was like, they love it, Bob. It's okay. They love it. She's like, oh my God, am I Insta famous? She's so <laughs> funny. She said, um, when we were in New York, she lives in New York. So when I was there, she's like, oh, we're going to be so famous now. And I was like, what? Aw. You got to get her own page. <laughs> I know. I should get her own page. If I lived in New York and I could send fun to her often or if she lived here, I would. But it's just kind of hard. Yeah, I've had my mom on the podcast a couple times. She's uh, she was an herbalist and oh, nice. Came from growing up in like the '50s and all the casserole dish era and the Jello mold era. Mm -hmm. So I have my, my traditional cooking background comes from <laughs> casseroles, tuna, <laughs> from, from tuna to green bean. To uh, a jello casserole. A jello casserole, and that's interesting. <laughs> uh, it's my mom's favorite dish. It's like orange jello with canned fruit. Mm. Canned fruit. You remember canned fruit? Yes, like, yeah. you used to get it, like, I don't know, at school lunches. I, uh, I have dole. kids. You still have dole. kids. <laughs> and so you mix that all in, and then you put uh, cream cheese and sour cream mm. together, and that's like the topping. And then you put shredded. Uh, sharp cheddar on top of the whole thing. Oh my god, what does that taste like? <laughs> they love. I I've never really been big into it, but it's like one of the family's traditional dishes. If that tells you how strange American cooking from the fifties through the eighties probably was. <laughs> There's this um this account I follow on Instagram where this woman is basically doing all this vintage cooking and she has all these vintage like appliances yeah yeah it's a uh, it's wild because uh, she's like following a vintage recipe book and doing things it's it's amazing cooking was so much work back then yeah i'm, comp I'm complaining because i feel like my little portable hot plate doesn't get hot enough but <laughs> <laughs> that's all they what'd have. you do when all the kindling was wet <laughs> yeah, as far as jello salads go i grew up on an ambrosia salad, I think it was, was called. Yes, I've... canned fruit uh -huh. and like shredded coconut and I think condensed milk and some other cream, creamy stuff. Uh -huh. So And whipped cream maybe is the other thing. And it ends up That's being... That's one of those like forgotten this. dishes. Yeah, it ends up being like this creamy fruit salad thing. Ambrosia salad. People loved. Did love, loved a lot. Yeah. And then no one's like... What? Never heard of that. Or baked sure. Alaska? Yes. Like baked Alaska is good though. Oh, it's delicious. Yeah. Not good for you, but really good. <laughs> but like you never you never see it anymore. Like the last yeah. time you went to a restaurant, and you're like baked Alaska. They come out I, and they light it on fire. <laughs> yeah, I think they burn down too many restaurants. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because it was a showpiece, right? Like, yeah. But That's one of my a... favorite desserts in the book, though, is um, this coconut sweet bread that is completely paleo and gluten-free. It's in the back. 
and it's made with almond flour and cassava flour and just um, nuts and dried fruit and it's yummy. What is it called again? It's called coconut sweet bread. Coconut sweet bread. Where are you? I could just look it up in the index, but I think this will go faster even though I know it won't. <laughs> <laughs> it is on page 118, 119, 118. 118, 119. Yeah. And that's my paleo version of a traditional Guyanese um, dessert um, that's usually made kind of exactly the same, but using wheat flour and coconut and then lots of dried fruits. Oh, you got an ice cream in here too. I do have an ice cream in there. It's sour sop ice cream. It's good. Sour sop ice cream. What in the world is that? So sour stuff is a fruit, uh, it's a tropical fruit, and it has a little bit of a tart and sweet flavor. It has an unusual flavor that's hard to describe, but it makes an amazing ice cream um, that was definitely a part of my childhood. Huh, I'm learning so much today. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta look at that again. Yeah. And so of course, like the version of it I have in there is the paleo version, and you can also make it non-paleo if you're not paleo, using the same ingredients and swapping it for like um, condensed milk and evaporated milk. Yeah, I mean, this is actually almost actually good for you. You want yeah, a yeah. half a cup of maple syrup, vanilla, grated nutmeg, a pinch of salt, a can of coconut cream. Yep. All right. And it's I'm so easy that. to make. You blend it all together, put it in a, in a like freezer safe pan, Stick it in a freezer for about five hours and then scoop it in and enjoy. Fun. Go yeah. get the book. Make some ice cream. <laughs> uh, coconut sweet bread. I found it. Yay! Coconut sweet bread. It's kind of like a banana bread, but just with nuts and coconut and then dried fruit. Traditional. That's it's like the uh, <clears throat> like our old Christmas. Christmas bread, but but better. Yes, exactly. But the the that terrible cake that nobody eats. Fruit cake. <laughs> fruit cake. <laughs> it's the candied fruit in there that's just weird. Like why? Yeah. What? Although I have to tell you that in Guyana we make our fruit cake, but we like puree all those fruits and okay. then it. So what you end up having is like a kind of pound cake esque type of cake. When we make fruit cake, we blend all those fruits together. Actually, first we soak them in rum. Um, so we soak those fruits in rum. People can have those fruits soaking for years. Um, it's really years? Long. Years. Like I have a batch that's going on in four years now, and it's you just... had fruit in rum for four years. You want me to show it to you? <laughs> and you haven't touched it? Yeah, is it right like behind taking... you? Oh, let me grab it. It's right over here because I just okay. did a post today about it. Um, it's just, you take from it and then you add to it. So, like, it just keeps getting up. Let me show you what it looks like. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no. What was that? That was me dropping a cup. All good. <laughs> All good. This is all being cut. Cut, cut, cut. All right, I got it. So here it is. That is your jar of rum fruit. That looks this like is my jar. jam. It's <laughs> my jar of rum soaked fruit that's like leaking because I tilted it to pick it up. Um, I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. So you take some out and you put more back in? So you take some out to use it in whatever recipe you're going to use it in. And then you add, keep adding to it because you don't want it to be, you don't want it to be done, right? And so, oh my God, it smells like craziness. This is not paleo, please. Let me just, disclaimer. Okay. This has rum. We're taking... We're taking a detour from paleo to just, just talking a little bit about really good stuff. Food. Um, this one looks like oh yeah. Think, think about like a 
rum soaked gummy bears or something like that, or cherries or something in that vein. And that's what it, it is. You ever just take it to parties and you're just like, here guys, grab a spoon. No, no, <laughs> but I did, um, <laughs> I do kind of pull it out as my little party trick sometimes and to ask people if they want to, if they want to try it. Um, and so we use those fruits and then we puree them and then we add them to our cake when we're making our fruit cake. And so it's like a boozy pound cake with a little bit of fruit in it versus all those chunky fruits that are in traditional American I bet it'd be really good with that ice cream on top of it. Yes, it is. It's fantastic. You knew it would be. Yeah. So, um, if you ever want to try that, that recipe is oh, also I do. on the and we Also on the website. Make, yeah. And, and you're going to need some rum. <laughs> you're going to need rum. You're going to need some good Caribbean rum and... <laughs> You're going to need like prunes and um, raisins and currants. And that's the kind of stuff that ends up being in there. A delicious, rummy, fruity jam. Yes, oh, exactly. Oh, I wish I could have that. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I think I'm ready to throw this rice in. Okay, so put that rice in. Um, you want to put all of it in there. All right. Cauliflower rice. It's just bagged and pieced up. Yeah. It looks pretty good. All right. And then just give that a good mix. And we'll let this cook for a little bit just so that that cauliflower rice can defrost a little and kind of come together with all those flavors you have in that pan. And then this is when I would turn it up to high, right? Yeah, you would turn it to high, but we already established that you should just keep it on high. I actually turned it down a little. Oh, that... wow. <laughs> yeah. Just kicking. <laughs> so I cranked it back up, and I'm going to put the rest of the salt in too, yeah? That, that burner is like, you're not going to talk to me about like not being hot enough. I'm going to show you. It's like, uh -huh. it's like, how dare you? How dare you? I'm a, I'm a Dido, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then all the rest of that salt and usually um i would ser save some of the basil to add at the end but we put it in and it's totally fine It'll i have more I, I have more i just measured out a little there to put in here yeah it's looking good though from what i can see yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah yep. i'm getting there i'm getting there <laughs> It has all the right colors. And then once you get that mixed up, we're gonna go add, I usually let it cook for a little bit, um, just so that the cauliflower rice can toast in uplifted covers. Yeah, it's got some crisp, so I just, brown. don't mess with it. It's got to yeah. sear a little, it's like browning yeah. meat, right? Yeah, just leave it there and then you'll give it a turn in a few minutes and then we'll add the coconut milk and everything. Sounds good. In the yeah. meantime, you can tell me a story. Yeah, what do you want you know? <laughs> I don't know how how did you how did your family uh, end up in the states? Because you're uh, yeah, you're really from the Caribbean. How did you get here? Yeah, so we're from Guyana, um, which is actually in South America, but we have a strong Caribbean heritage, so we consider ourselves to be Caribbean people. Um, and my family moved to New York um, over twenty years ago. Oh my God, I can't even remember. Um, how old were you? I was 18. Oh, um, really? You're an adult. I was 18. I moved with my dad and mom and my older brother to New York. My dad's family had been living in New York for a while. Um, and if you know the immigrant story, um, your family comes to America, then they sponsor you. You go through a very long immigration mm. process. And eventually you end up like getting your visa and coming to the U.S. So we moved and sort of started over um, in New York in 20, 2001, I think, was that year. And wow. so sometimes it's hard to realize that it's like 2001. I almost said 2011, but now it's 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, and ended up in New York, lived what, in... What, you, what were you thinking as an 18-year-old girl, like... I was devastated. Can you imagine? Like, I have all my friends. Like, 
I had just finished high school, but mm-hmm. I was doing um, in Guyana. We can go back to high school for an additional year. Um, it's in the British system, and so it's called sixth form. So I'd gone oh. back to sixth form, and I was like, finally have this independence and like feeling great. And then my family's like, no, no, we're gonna move to America, and here's what's gonna happen. <laughs> and so, you know, I moved to America and lived in Brooklyn with some of my cousins for a while. So they helped me to like quickly lose that like acclimate there because <laughs> everything I'm like, wow, this is so crazy. Because you you move from like small country, and I lived like in a suburb of Georgetown, which is the capital of Guyana, but Guyana, like. Yeah. Like, I didn't live in the city city. I lived in, like, a little suburb. And so, like, you know all your, like, neighbors and stuff to moving to Brooklyn where it's, like, chaos and confusion. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, wow. And we also moved in winter. And I had oh, never geez. Been winter before. So, New York, November in New York. And, like, the sun shining really bright. And I'm telling my aunt, like, I'm going to go outside for a little bit. And you open the door and you're like, why is it cold? <laughs> like, why? like That's the cold. It's like a freezer out there. Yeah. It was like definitely a culture shock. Um, and then kind of adjusting to that. And, you know, there's this thing of like, wherever you immigrate to, the first place that you go is always like, you kind of become that person like that. So I feel like I'm a New Yorker at core, like. Brooklynite and like put me on Flatbush Avenue anytime and I can navigate except when I was there last time and I was like oh man I hate this place <laughs> <laughs> you know maybe I am a country girl at heart after all. <laughs> yeah and so it was it was wild but it was also really good and I always say that like I moved to New York at the perfect time because I was like I was going to college I went to Brooklyn College um and then I was like working in Manhattan and I had friends and we would like go to bars at the end of the work shift and stuff like that. So it was like the best time to be in this city and like experiencing New York City in your 20s and you just like do whatever you want. Like right? this place really doesn't sleep, does it? <laughs> right, exactly. And you could like stay up all night and then go to work the next morning and you're totally fine. I couldn't do that now even if I tried, but. No, me neither. It was just, it was fantastic. Whereas, like, I feel like Colorado is the perfect place for raising a family. And I have three kids and, um, you know, they're four, soon to be seven and 11. And they are outdoorsy and they can ride their bikes and do Mm -hmm. all these things. And, you know, you can just enjoy not having to fetch a stroller up. Subway I, couldn't, or something. I couldn't imagine growing up in just a city environment without any like connection to like the outdoors, the actual nothing. nature, you know, Trees. nothing, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Um, if you wanted to do that, you'd have to like plan it and like drive outside of the <laughs> state. I mean, you could just walk. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, Central Park is. I mean, Central Park is okay, but it's also weird and creepy. Like, yeah. you'd, <laughs> you also get, you'd also get murdered or cracked. Okay, whatever you're looking for. Yeah. And you always, also always a great married. gelato, too, though. So let's be, let's yeah. be fair. Yeah. I mean, you're, <laughs> listen, you can say that about any place in New York. Like, there's pluses <laughs> and there are things that you want to avoid. So, yeah. 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 I forgot to put the pepper in. Oh, it's fine. You can just put it in now. I'm putting it in now. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget your pepper, people. Pepper's super important. Yeah. Pepper's pleasantly powerful. <laughs> and Trying now to alliterate and fail. And add coconut milk and water, and then we'll just let that all cook together. All right, I want to get a little more crispy, though, yeah? A little, a little crispy. How long? Because it's cauliflower, so you want to, like, sear it hot, right? Because Otherwise, over time, the cauliflower would it's just turn again. to mush. I mean, life in New York is great, and you had access to everything, right? And so, like, in New York, I had my mom, who lived down the street from me. I had, like, Queens, which was just adjacent to where I live, and Little Guyana, which is a whole neighborhood of Guyanese people that live in New York. And so, home wasn't really that far. 
Right. And so then there was like all of these Guyanese restaurants and stuff that had food that you could just go buy, like when you felt like eating something. And then fast forward, I moved to Denver where I there's nobody else but me and my husband that are Guyanese people, at least that we know of. There are no Caribbean restaurants to be found and we want this food. So I started making all these recipes and like calling my mom and saying, hey mom, how do you make this? And can you teach me again how to make this? Because I know you taught me when I was younger, but I didn't really have to make it. And <laughs> I didn't really pay attention. I was I was it. And by the way, you know how Caribbean people cook? They don't measure anything. So uh, my mom was in her like effort to teach me would tell me things like, oh, it's a handful of this and a pinch of that. And you know when it's ready. Like, you know. <laughs> and I'm like. I don't know, mom. I don't actually know. What size hand? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. This is Two handfuls. Thing. Great. <laughs> so when my mom was telling me how to make roti, that's what she would say. And I, like a handful of flour is one roti. And I'm like, but your palm size is bigger than mine so how would i know you know <laughs> and so i started like actually measuring things and writing it down and once i got it to her approved standard i was like yes i can share this and i started sharing it with friends and they were like you should share this on a blog like these are really good so then i started sharing it on my blog and that's how the whole like metmg blog started um food truck yeah. Yeah. Food truck? Oh, I wish. I wish. I really want to open a restaurant. No, like truly, I want to open a restaurant. My husband's like, I'm trying to retire, not do more work. <laughs> so. That's fine. This is my retirement plan. <laughs> I'm going to hang out exactly. at this restaurant. Exactly. There we go. Did you, right. uh, so I think you should add... The coconut milk in the water now. Okay. And then let that, that'll help that uh, cauliflower rice to cook. And you can add it together. Oh, that coconut milk looks so good. Mmm. Yeah. I haven't had lunch yet either, so this is going to be my lunch. <laughs> A very late lunch. Yeah. It's going to be dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do. And you just kind of mix that in. And I would just cover that and let it cook. Cool, I can do that. Yeah, and if you want to leave it on high, that's fine. I'm gonna leave it on high, cause yeah. I mean, how it's how high is high, really? Yeah, <laughs> it's not gonna get that. And once it because it, it because it's cauliflower rice, it's already really soft and kind of easy to cook because of the size of the the grain. Mm -hmm. um, and you've cooked the the pumpkin butternut squash. Mm -hmm. Everything just needs to come together in that coconut milk. Um, and it's gonna be Jeez. a little wet. Yeah, it's gonna be a little kind of wet. Think like risotto esque. Couscousy. Yeah. So and then it'll be fine. I believe you. I believe yeah. it's gonna be. I believe it's gonna be delicious. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Darn tootin' it is. <laughs> and healthy. This is this will probably be the healthiest thing I eat today. <laughs> you could eat that whole pot, and it would still wouldn't be. As much calories as eating one serving with rice. <laughs> I mean, just the coconut milk alone, you know. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, coconut oil has health benefits. What are, what are the health benefits of yeah, coconut so oil? Yeah, so coconut oil is actually great for a lot of things. It's an anti-inflammatory, so when you add it to your food, it helps with digestion. It's good for your skin. Um, so if you ever wanted to put, like, some coconut oil on your skin it's really really good for your skin and your hair it's good for your hair and i recently found out that it's um like an antiseptic so you can yeah. put it on cut make salves out of it <laughs> bruises and stuff like that <laughs> yeah, yeah well, i think uh my mom used to make salves out of like coconut oil or beeswax yeah right? or coconut and beeswax together maybe even mm -hmm. and then you know because we didn't we didn't go to the doctors either yeah my mom was the doctor. She was she was she was oh, yeah. the, she was the witch doctor. <laughs> and so <laughs> yeah. I cracked my when I cracked my skull open when I was like five years old on this I don't know, out of cement window thing. Oh she my god. She sealed it back together with cayenne pepper. Oh my god. So it was literally just like cayenne pepper and then held it held it down for like I laid in her lap while she held my head for I don't know, I probably fell asleep a few hours. 
and sealed it right back together. Oh my God, that's an amazing story. <laughs> I am definitely not that mom. I am the, let's go to an emergency room right now for this little cut because I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> It, it it works for just like regular cuts too. And people are like, doesn't it burn? And it's like, no, because your blood is spewing out of your body. So oh. it just basically will make a a, a fast scab, oh. right? So it's, that just stops the bleeding. I'm going to have to try that on myself, not on my kids because yeah. they'll probably yeah. freak out. <laughs> I mean, I, I, at the time I had no medical knowledge, so I just did whatever she told me. No, because you know what? <laughs> there's so much of that, like my parents too. My mom... In the Caribbean, like we make this thing with this thing called soft grease, and I think it's some kind of like um, Vaseline petroleum byproduct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very greasy. It looks like beeswax, but every single thing you have, they'll tell you get some soft grease and put it on it, and you're supposed to like it's like a wax. It looks like a candle, and you light it, and then you drop a few of the hot drops on whatever. Cut, cut you have over, and it like miraculously heals it up so there i mean they've been doing it for a century right so yeah <laughs> exactly it must, it must work yeah. some some of it must work so, so yeah the, the greek version of windex is yeah my mom will also version. when like when she's with me and my kids have a fever she'll also put lime juice like just under scalp and coconut oil and it always breaks the fever. I kid what? you not, always. She's always, she's, and when she calls, like if I say, oh, the kids are sick, she's like, you know, we'll go do the lime and coconut oil thing. And I'm like, no, nope. <laughs> we're gonna give them Tylenol, but it works. So every time she does it, every time. Okay, so lime juice and coconut oil? Yeah, and you just on rub the it on your, on your head, but like in the middle part, this like. All right, the crown. The, Cover your crown chakra with the coconut right. oil. <laughs> right. Right and the lime juice. And, and it works. Yeah. And it breaks gone. your fever and then you're like cured. <laughs> okay. I don't get sick that often, but next time I am, I'm going to try it. I'll keep you updated. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? You didn't know that when we were going to have this conversation, you were going to cook a tasty meal, get some health tips and some like gynees remedies remedies right you know i like i like to explore a little bit of health a little bit of cooking <laughs> and a little bit of how much new york city sucks lots, <laughs> lots of bonus experiences going on here <laughs> <laughs> indeed okay. indeed uh so if you were going to introduce someone who had never had a caribbean meal before yeah I would start with the first chapter, which is all my favorite things. Um, oh. So right up front, if you make nothing else, I would check out the first chapter, which is also where this pumpkin rice recipe is from. That's where I this found it. It is, in fact, mm -hmm. one of my favorite dishes in this book because it's easy to cook, as we can see, and doesn't require a lot of ingredients and also... You can meal prep it and stick it in your fridge and eat it whenever you want, you know? So it's, I love things like that because as a busy mom, you always have to have a backup in your fridge, even if it's for yourself. Like even if you're giving your kids chicken nuggets and French fries. They need a snack. Being good for yourself, like. In they the need a snack. I, I, I don't have, we don't have kids, but I do have two dogs and one of them is super picky. So I always have to have some sort of backup meat substance either ground beef or an old piece of chicken or <laughs> some yep. steak or something that's just randomly in there or he ain't eating breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Yep, so, see? Spoiled little ragamuffin. <laughs> it works for all kids, um, even mm -hmm. fur babies. Even the, Yeah, even the four-legged ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just got to keep snacks on hand. Yeah, exactly. You, I wish you liked peanut butter and jelly as much as kids. <laughs> <laughs> Save me a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> oh so uh you you have any future cookbook plans coming up or what's happening in the future i don't know i mean i just did this one it's doing really well um it was number one on amazon for quite some time and i'm doing a cookbook tour right now i'm Ooh. going back to new york next week for the new york stop then i go to toronto um and then i'm trying to kind of figure out the other stops I'm doing this a very non-traditional cookbook tour way. It's kind of stretched out because I have to navigate school breaks and all these other things. 
Um, mm. But yeah, and in terms that's of, fun though. It's so fun. I I, I did a big launch event. I went back to Guyana and I did a big launch event. And the outpouring of support for people in Guyana was overwhelming. Um, it like everything so it sold out. All the extra books I took sold out. Like it was just amazing. Um, and so I'm trying to just touch, <laughs> trying to touch like big markets where I know I have a lot of Guyanese <laughs> people who will come out um, and support and, and experience. And I get to meet them. They get to meet me. It's fantastic. And then you should, what you should do is just plan everywhere that you want to go on vacation to and then just go there. I know. Someone said that. They were like, just choose places you want to visit and then just do your, <laughs> your tour there. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or fun idea. If you want Althea Brown to come to your town and hang out, <laughs> I know put it down in the comment section and uh, book her an Airbnb. I'm sure she'll have no problem staying there for free. <laughs> Right. <laughs> exactly. And then you can meet me, your family can meet me, your friends, mm -hmm. some people. We'll have a good time. We'll talk about Caribbean paleo and maybe I'll make you something. <laughs> and if you're real lucky, she'll uh she'll make you uh the Met M G. G. Yeah, G. I said it right the first time. Yeah, you got it right the first time. Oh it ain't easy. It ain't easy. Uh, anyway, so how, how do we, how do we know when it's done? When it's when all the liquids dry out. Okay, I believe she is done. Yes. We have made the uh, Paleo Caribbean pumpkin rice, and I'm gonna put some in this bowl for myself. Maybe let it cool down for a second. I know. What do you think? How does it look? It looks delicious. It's colorful. Got some red from the tomatoes and some yellows and some greens. I'm just gonna turn this off. Okay. All right. Althea Brown has helped me make <laughs> this amazing, this amazing paleo dish of rice with cauliflower rice. It smells good. It smells like it's. It almost has. It's very. It's very curry like. Yeah. Like is is you know is curry's not a Caribbean thing, but like coconut and some of the, like the there flavors are, some, are very similar, right? Curry is a big uh, part of the Caribbean because we have a lot of Indian indentured uh, laborers mm -hmm. that came to the Caribbean like right after slavery was abolished to kind of fill that labor gap. So there's a huge uh, curry. Okay. It's a huge influence in our cuisine. So that, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Now I feel stupid. <laughs> Don't feel stupid. We're all learning together. <laughs> we are. All right. I'm going to learn how delicious okay, let's this see. is. Here we go. Moment of truth. One. Two, three. Mmm. It's hot. Mmm. <laughs> That's really good. Oh, good. It is like, like you said, it, it's a uh, very couscous. Yeah. Kind of consistency or, or risotto. Yeah. But more, Fake. more al dente risotto. Fake risotto. <laughs> Fake risotto. Yeah. Healthy risotto. Just that light, like back acid of the tomato, but the really, like creamy coconut fresh mm -hmm. and, and the herbs. I didn't even dig out the sticks because I think they're just part of the dish now. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody will find them. If you find one, just use it to floss. <laughs> yeah. Bye. And then if you had like the dried shrimp in there, you would get the umami. So then you'd have like the acid acidity of mm -hmm. the tomatoes, the creaminess of the coconut, the umami from the shrimp and just bring it all together. And the, I think I would like that one extra like kick of the shrimp would be really good. Yeah. And the cauliflower is supposed to have the texture of rice. Like that's, mm -hmm. yeah, in there. It does. Yeah. Like I was afraid that it would get like too, so too soft. Which, just, yeah, no. Because it's cauliflower, but. Yeah. No. It's got a nice firm consistency to its own. Yeah. It is tasty. Thank you so much for helping me make your rice. <laughs> yeah. And thank you for trying it. And. The fact that you're still eating it, I feel like. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> Which is <hot>. it's good. <laughs> I ate more if it wasn't so hot. <laughs> <laughs> Look, folks, he's still eating it, so mm -hmm. you know it's good. <laughs> I'm going to finish it, I promise. I'm <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> I haven't had lunch today, so I'm also starving. So <laughs> that's the problem with hot you know, <clears throat> that pizza comes, right? And you're just like, no. You must wait, but your hand just moves on its own. 
Yeah. And then, and then it's raising it to your face and you see it's steaming. You yep. know it's going to burn your tongue, but you do it anyway. Hey, the best meals are the ones where you're like, (laughs) 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 still need. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I'm going to share this. This is going to be lunch for the whole household. Yay. If I get crazy with it, I'll make the plantains that are supposed to go on here. Yes. Tell me, tell me, tell me about some plantains that should go on here. Yeah, real quick. so you just want to get some really yellow ones with like black on them, the soft kind, and you just slice them up, peel them, slice them up, and just pan fry them. You can do it. I do it in, in coconut oil in the book. Um, you can do it in any kind of high smoke point oil that you have, and you want to just cook it for a minute or two on each side, flip it over on medium heat, um, and then just cook it until it's golden brown and it is like candy, and it goes really well with this dish. Because it adds a little bit of sweetness. If you page nineteen in the cookbook is the rice, and the page number to get you to those plantains is also on that recipes page. Yes, it is. <laughs> so everybody, go uh, get uh, Caribbean Paleo. Uh, the link is right down there. It uh, takes you to my Amazon store. So you know, help me, yep. help her, <laughs> and uh, we'll all help each other. You get a cookbook. She gets the joy of knowing that you purchased her cookbook. And you get to make all these delicious dishes. Absolutely. It's a win for everybody. That's all I'm saying. Absolutely. (laughs) Thank you so much. You're welcome. And also go follow her on Facebook or Instagram. Instagram, Facebook, Facebook, TikTok, TikTok, threads, wherever you get your social media content. You want to get real pro about it, LinkedIn? (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Well, you have a wonderful rest of your day. What are you having for dinner? I'm uh, not sure yet. I might ah. have the chicken stew because I usually make that on Mondays. Well, um, that's also in that book. Um, I make a boneless chicken version of it. That's just a shortcut. Um, and I have I make a big batch and then I have it for the rest of the week for emergency purposes. And I don't feel like making anything else. <laughs> I mean, she's had a busy day today already. You get yeah. to have your chicken tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you all for watching. Uh, Go buy a cookbook. Cheers. Order up.